Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to the first kickoff episode of the Holy Donuts podcast brought to you by We Give. Super excited today because I get to kick off the show with one of my good friends, Chip Nightingale, who currently is at Word of Life Fellowship, one of the coolest organizations out there serving students and getting the gospel out to them. So, Chip, thanks so much for joining me today. Well, I'm excited about being with you, Matt, and excited about that. I'm the very first person to be on your podcast. How amazing is that? Dude, I would not have anyone else do it. We had a trailer out, which is just me, you know, talking too much. But besides that, man, first one in and just kick it off. Tell people a little bit about you, man. Tell them how you got into this space. You are currently VP of development, correct? For Word of Life. Give them your official title, your CV, the whole nine yards, but really just help us understand how you got into this space and, and what you love about it. Yeah, well, it's amazing how uh, God takes you through journeys to prepare you for the journey that he has really prepared for you now. And I think what's exciting about uh, the journey that I am at right now is I am seeing how God has used all of the experience that I've gone through in the last 25 years of my adult life. I think it's only 25 years uh, of my adult life as we kind of go through this process of raising funds. But before that, I started a business right out of college. Actually, while I was in college, I started a construction company. And that grew into a multi-million dollar company, in which we had 15 employees. And I did all the sales. I did everything, you know, setting things up. And the Lord just started challenging my heart to do even more. So we got into a daycare franchise and we were going to minister in that way. And all these things started to happen and it felt like we were heading in the right direction. And then God put a halt on all of it. 2005 to 2008 was when the housing market crash hit. And so every. Everything just changed for me, but it was during that time, I really right before I lost everything, God started saying, hey, I got something different for you. And I just was fighting it and fighting it and fighting it. And he had to strip it away from me, went on a missions trip uh, with Word of Life, believe it or not, and, uh, and started taking work teams overseas. And uh, next thing I know, they're asking if I would come up to Scroon Lake, New York and start a volunteer program there, which I had no, I didn't know anything about volunteers or anything. I just knew how to build buildings. I knew how to do sales. Well, I took those same approaches to start the volunteer program. And we grew that from 150 volunteers my first year to over 1500 within five years. And then after that, the Lord was like, Hey, I've got something different for you. I want you to move back to Michigan and went back to Michigan, not knowing I was going to pass our church, but the church I grew up in asked if I would consider it. So I was like, yeah, maybe not. No, I don't ever <laughs> want to be a pastor. But I went through the process because it's like, you know what, God, I, I'm not going to reject him again and again and again. I'm going to do, you know, I learned my lesson the first time. So I walked through it and gave them all of these 10 page papers of this is what we have to do to change the church, thinking that would just cause them scare to them panic off, right? and scare them off. And yeah. needless to say, they took me on. And after eight years, we grew from 75 to over 700 weekly attendance and started running a camp. And because we were successful at running this camp, getting them out of debt, Word of Life asked if I'd come back and be the director of advancement. And in the three years, they have moved me from director of advancement to vice president of, of advancement, which just means now I'm over not just fundraising, I'm over all the volunteers and uh, getting ready to uh, start uh, implementing new processes for overseas trips as well. So uh, that is a quick um, synopsis of what uh, I've gone through to get to where I am at today. I love that though, because it, it's so cool to see how God gave you those skills, right? The the sales, which anyone who's in development and advancement out there kind of knows. Like that's that's that key skill set that's underneath everything you're doing is the ability to pitch a vision, to get people excited and motivated to give towards the organization. But it's just cool to see how God used every single step along the way to say, Hey, I'm gonna prepare you for what I have next to help serve the kingdom in a bigger way. Yeah, and I don't think anyone dreams of growing up one like no one's a seven year old kid saying, One day I hope I'm senior VP of advancement for a large yeah, exactly. Christian company, right? But God <laughs> God knows what he's doing and brings us in. So I love that. Well, interesting enough, God even challenged my heart early on in business that it was about relationships, not about actually making sales. Huge. And that was huge for me. We developed our construction company not based on this is how we're going to do it, but how do you want us to do it for you? And that mode of thinking really set the stage for how I led even up to where we are today. And I did not realize how important it was going to be in the field I am now to really um, be very relational. That's huge, man. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So with that relationship kind of thought process in mind, right? I'll transition us really quick. 
into really a question that we're going to be asking a lot of guests in the weeks and the months and hopefully years ahead on this show, which is, you know, you're in this advancement chair, right? Yeah. So talk to us a little bit, help other advancement leaders or development leaders, or even nonprofit marketing leaders out there think through what are some of the best strategies for engaging in relationship, right? For engaging in relationship, your donor base. What, what have you seen that really worked well that you think is just absolutely something that you guys have crushed it on? You know, the thing that we are doing an extremely good job with within our organization, uh, in the last three years, we set out a goal in 2021 by 2025 to grow our major donors by 30%. And we actually did that within the first two and a half years, even during the COVID period of time. And the reason why is because we basically invited more people onto our team to be able to go to people and have relationship. There's really aren't any tools or anything like that. You just have to have a gift of jab. You have to have a gift, gift of listening and a gift of hearing what they're saying and remembering so that when we go back to them, they know that they're a part of our family, very, very much like being a pastor. Yeah. And I share that all the time with our team. Remember, you're like the elders of our ministry. You're going out and you're encouraging those who are investing in us. And uh, we're not asking for money. What we're doing is just uh, giving them um, the tools they need to grow in their walk with the Lord. And if the Lord works on their heart to, to uh, give us more funds because of that, then great. But it, maybe it is that we uh, actually provide funds for someone else. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, we want to steer their hearts where God wants their hearts to be. And uh, because of that, our relationships have grown deeply. For us, a major donor is anybody who gives more than $5,000 in a year, at some point in time in a year. So it's just been exciting to see that growth. Yeah, I, I love that. And I, I'm just picking up on your strategy there. It's really just people, right? It's, it's people. You even said like the strategy is we hired more people. And sometimes we're looking for what's the new cool tool or like the magic trick that, you know, it's a silver bullet that, well, if we yep. just put this system in place, then that system will fix everything. And yeah. the best system you have sometimes is people, right? Yep. It's, exactly. It's more relationship builders, boots on the ground to go do that work of building and reaching out. Well, congrats to Word of Life. I mean, that's a huge, huge jump in major donors and uh, great work there. So what's something that you're seeing right now? in the nonprofit, especially, you know, Christian nonprofit, which is who our audience is, right? Who we're looking to serve. What's something that you're seeing that's really exciting that, that has you, you pumped about where this thing is going for ministries across the country? Well, I think the thing that's exciting to me is the fact that if you engage your new donors today and you can see how they, your, their investment's going to impact the world, they're more likely to stay with you. For me, that's exciting because we're a worldwide ministry. For others, I'm sure like, oh my goodness, we're only ministering in our county. But how is your county yeah. touching the world? I mean, that's really what it boils down to. And I think it's so important that all ministries, especially in the advancement field or development field, that we're thinking about how we're helping the donor touch the world, how this specific thing is going to have impact, not just where we're at right now, but in the world. And what's so cool is the technology we have today is making it so that people can not just hear about it, but they can see it, they can touch it, they can feel it. My kids, they have friends all over the world. They've never even met them, but they're engaging with them. They're having conversations with them. They've never been face to face, but through like what we're doing here with this podcast, they can build a relationship with someone. So I think that's one of the exciting things that's happening for the future. Okay, and then on the, the other side of that, right? So let's be happy for a minute. And then yeah. what, what are you a little bit concerned about? Not not worried, not you know keeping you up at night, but what's just something that you're keeping a pulse on saying, eh, we'll see where this goes? Well, research is showing us that the giving trends are changing. The boomers, the great generation, the boomers, even the Gen Zers where, you know, kind of where I'm at, you know, all those types of things. What One of the things I began to realize is that most of the donors we have are there because of their loyalty to us. They're loyal to a brand. The donors for the future are not. They're not loyal to the brand. And basically, they can move in any direction at any moment because someone might touch their heart in a different way. And I think that's one of the things that's concerning to us because right now, and we're having conversations about it and getting ready for this, 
but we don't have the tools in place to keep them engaged and keep them excited and those types of things because reality is we still only have six major gift officers. We really can only touch about six to 700 people a year, but we need our donor base to be 10,000, 20,000. So how do we begin to get tools within our tool belt that can make them feel like they're a part of what's happening? Because if we don't make them feel like they're a part of it, they're gonna go to someone who will. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, every, it's it goes back to that relationship piece again, which is, hey, at the end of the day, the, the next generation gives based on relationship and based on really communication. Like, who is talking to them the most? Who has that storytelling in their ear on a regular basis? Who is in front of them that, that moves them, like you said? And so, so critical just to always be in front of that audience, to be there, you know, seemingly that, that brand or that organization that they just know, oh yeah, of course, word of life. That's of course who I'd give to because they're all, I'm always hearing stories about impact from them. So yeah, that's great. I mean, I think that is one of those things that is concerning, but it's also an opportunity, right? Like most of the things that we deal with in ministry, it's, it is a concern, but if we see, okay, God, what are you up to here? It's an opportunity for us to evolve, to grow and to ultimately be more impactful long-term. Absolutely. I think that, and I think that's a failure that we're, you know, we're an old ministry. We're over 75 years old. And uh, typically ministries that are have been around as long as us, we're stuck in that past. And we have been. And we're getting to that place where we're beginning to move forward and, and, and move out of it. But the mind shift of realizing that it's the old way, it, it may have worked for the old way and being able to connect with people in the old way. But to connect with new people, we need to know how and, and what it is that those new people really are going to be passionate about. And we need to be able to make adjustments, which is, that's what makes it exciting for me. It was what made it exciting for me to come back to Word of Life was like to move us so that we're still going to be relevant in the next 50 to, to the next 100 years. Man, there's some changes that need to be made, but this is the time to be a part of those changes. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be part of these ministries because there are so many. I mean, I think Word of Life is one of thousands across the country, right? Tens Correct. of thousands maybe, that are were, were, came out of the huge evangelical movement of the 50s and 60s, right? Yep. And, and there was just this wellspring of people who wanted to go impact the world with the good news of the gospel. And those ministries are kind of natural age-wise starting to age to where it's, Hey, wait, w the way that we did it then was great. And it served that those generations so well. Okay. So how do we become the next generation of this ministry? And I think you guys are there as are thousands of ministries across the country. So thanks for speaking to that, for being transparent. Well, I think it's important. And this is not to, to put a plug in for you guys, but just the reality of, our, uh, of having conversations with the share talent and other organizations, we give those types of things that we have out there. I think it's important for us to have these conversations to help us to grow together because we don't all know everything. We need to yeah. lean on each other and, and grow together. And I think that's the shift that's happening in ministries. It used to be, we're going to be all things to all people. And uh, it's so fun to, to see the shift in our ministry, whereas, hey, we don't have to be. There's another organization over here that can actually do this way better than we could ever do this. Let's partner with them. Let's just be good at what we, we are good at. We're good at relationships. Right. And let's let them help us be even better at relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe they have the tools so that maybe we don't have to have as many staff. It'll be cheaper. But at the same time, it, it will be a, a great investment because we know once we get them from that general file where they just started giving to the mid-level donor, we know once we, they become a mid-level donor with us that we're probably going to make them a major donor. And so these types of things are exciting for us as uh, we're developing relationships with other organizations. Yeah, so talking about helping other organizations grow. What book, what resource, what podcast? Please don't plug this because you don't know if this is going to be good. <laughs> Uh, but what resources do you find yourself giving away the most? What book? You can plug your own book here. I know you have one that's come out. What are you giving away to other leaders that you say, hey, if you're in this space, you need to read this. You need to listen to this. You need to watch this. What, what, what's the kind of that resource that you've been? Well, been to be honest with you, I'm not going to 
put a plug out there for my own book. It, it deals with conflict. We all have conflict, but if people want to know about that, they can read it, reach out yeah. to me. I would love to spend some time with you talking we'll about conflict, show, yeah. but for we're sure. talking about relationships and really one of the best thing, the, the best book for me that kind of opened my eyes and it's more of a story form book. It's not actually, a, you need to do this, this, and this. I like stories. It, it helps to paint a picture for me. Scott wrote in, he works for the focus group. They're in St. Augustine. Focus group is really, they help ministries like us with capital campaigns, knowing how to move things forward. Well, Scott wrote, and he's been in this business for a very, very long time. And his book, The Third Conversion, that's the one I tell people about all the time. And the reason why is because he pinpoints the value of relationships over anything else. And ultimately, because we're a Christian organization, and most of the people are probably going to be listening to this as a Christian organization, the reality is we're not the ones in charge of the money. And in fact, the people we're talking to, they're not the ones in charge of the money. God is. And so if we're encouraging their hearts through what God is doing in their lives, and this book just kind of walks you right through it. It gives you kind of example after example of illustrations of how this works out. And it really opens your eyes to the reality that, hey, I maybe they didn't give this time, but they might next time. And how do we encourage that? And hey, are we really listening to them? Maybe they should be giving to a different organization than us. And let's just build trust with that individual. Let's let God be the person that raises funds for us. And let's not get in the way of being the ones that think we have to do it all. That's so cool. Well, we'll definitely link in the show notes to that book by Scott Roden, The Third Conversion. Excited. And I should just reach out to Scott and actually have him on the show. He'd be a You should. Guy. I tell you what, man, he is a fantastic speaker. I've heard him several times and he would be a tremendous encouragement to your team. Cool. We'll, we'll definitely have him on if he's got the time for it. Chip Nightingale, thank you so much for being on the show today. Any last thoughts for, for the audience? Anything that you'd want to share before, before we sign off today? No, just the, I think, well, maybe the only thing I would add to all of this is that stay the course. The, the reality is in advancement, development teams, the average person only stays a year and a half. But I'm a business owner. I've been through the process. And when I went to school, they told us very specifically, it's going to take you three to five years to finally get to the place where you'll see success. It's the same way in development and advancement. It doesn't, relationships don't happen in a year and a half. Hang in there. Once you get over that year and a half hump, it'll start becoming real to you. And uh, if you love that ministry, God will do the work for you as long as you let him do the work. Chip, thanks so much for joining us today, man. Really an honor to have you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.